You're locked in with the innovators. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. What's going on? We locked in with the innovators YouTube. You already know I got the best interviews right here, man. I got the Bay Area zone, man. I got Mark E. Basie. I appreciate you, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Thanks for having me. Nah, thank you, bro, for taking the time out. It's a pleasure and a blessing of mine. I really appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you. To, to start off, can you um, let the people know where, the, uh, where you're from and where they can follow you on social media? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can follow me, Marky Basie, M-A-R-C-E-B-A-S-S-Y. I'm uh, from San Francisco, California. Shout out to San Francisco. Uh, <laughs> but I've been, in, uh, I've been in L.A. since I was 18, so a decade plus. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's getting to be, uh, it's almost as if I'm from L.A. at this point a little bit as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> now, I feel you. I've been out here for like six years myself, man. The, uh, it's flying, the time is flying by fast. That's what happens. You forget <laughs> how much. L.A. will really, like, it'll, it'll change change things about you if you're not careful. Nah, for sure. I, I definitely, <laughs> I, I want to get into that with you. But uh, first, can, can you tell me, uh, how do you feel about everything that's going on with uh, the, we got the coronavirus going on, we got the George Floyd protests, there's just been a lot going on in 2020. How do you feel about it? Mm. I feel... Uh, I feel uh, inspired and I feel uh, motivated. I think um, everything that's going on in our country, like, is something that was a long time coming. <clears throat> and unless there's some type of reckoning with our past, we can't really move forward past this point. So it's kind of like all these all these fights and uh, all these acts of justice, yeah. they were just, they were bound to happen. So it's really like, as a country, even for people who are like, you know, I'm from San Francisco, I'm, I'm with it. But a lot of people in this country that are just behind or just don't understand, yeah. it's, still, it's still good for them too. It's good yeah. for everyone to just mm -hmm. get the shit out on the table and, try to actually make a change that's going to stay. So I'm I'm excited about everything that's happening. And it's all a blessing to me in one way or another. Yeah. How do you feel the coronavirus has been affecting you as far as making music and getting work done? Coronavirus doesn't really affect me, honestly. I, I like, people have asked me that and I have, like, some answer, but it's really the same for me. I, I wake up, I do my thing in the morning, you know, work out, run read watch the news whatever and yeah. then i go in the, and then i go in the studio <laughs> so <laughs> if anything coronavirus just for me has taken away a lot of distractions but yeah. for people that work from home you know like my heart goes out to people that really that's like fucking up their livelihood but for me if i'm being honest it just uh got me more focused and just made me have to f have fun doing music, listening to music, reading, writing. So for me, it's been almost beneficial to have this forced kind of shut down, of my, especially of my social life. Yeah. I, I would say the same thing for me because I feel like during this time, I've been able to put out, like, I was putting out maybe, I would say three to four videos on, Insta on YouTube a week. Now I've been putting like 12 and 15, like the numbers have really shot up as far as me putting out content because I, I create content right in my room. So it's just been a, I just, right. There's no distraction, you know? That's what I'm saying, bro. Do you, I want to ask you, what was it like growing up in San Francisco for you? Well, I, I grew up in San Francisco, like in the nineties. So it was a beautiful time, actually. Yeah. Uh, I was like, I don't, it was like the golden age of hip hop when I was a little kid, the like skateboarding and, and hip hop culture were really tied together in San Francisco before that was mainstream. Yeah. So you see like this, like the little, like the white boy skaters would listen to like underground hip hop and Wu-Tang and I was soaking up all that. And then I also was fucking with 
like Bay Area rap music, Too Short and Mac Dre and Mac Maul. Yeah. And I was listening to like, and I was like the pop golden age too, like Mariah Carey. Yeah. It was just like, <laughs> mu- music was more out in the world. And I was just a little kid receiving it all. Yeah. Um, but it was a special time. Uh, I don't know. Uh, nah. Cards? Cars yeah. got robbed more often. <laughs> My car. <laughs> I feel like that's a that's a more nineties thing than now. Like our car would just get broken into twice a year. It was just expected. <laughs> that's funny that you say that. I live in like uh North Hollywood area and my car got stolen this year. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, I mean, I used to live in North Hollywood too. They'll get you out there. The, the, this is the one area where I thought, you know, I was safe from uh, that happening uh, for the most part. You go a little too far, you get a little by, like, victory. Yeah, for sure. It's <laughs> a whole different area. It gets, it looks less friendly when you get over there. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that the Bay Area gets the credit it deserves in, in like, the, the music culture, music scene? You live in L.A. Do you think we get the respect that we deserve? Well, this is the thing, like, we get paid. There's a lot of people from the Bay who are huge pop producers. Uh, I mean, actually, obviously across all genres, but there's people who are just a little more behind the scenes. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, did you know J.R. Rodham, like, is from the Bay Area? Or, you know, there's, like, these people who had huge success. But I guess credit-wise, um I mean, no, they could give, we should probably give more credit. Like, but I don't think we care. Like, I've never really been. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel like the Bay Area is one place where it matters a lot that Bay Area artists have love from their own community. Yeah. I think we, I think we like that more than, sometimes more than being mainstream even. Like, all the most, the people who really pop off, like the g Easy's and Kehlani's, they're so identified with where they're from, way yeah. more than than uh, a normal like mainstream artist like that. So yeah. I think we're doing a pretty good job. No, nah, for sure. Uh, when so when when did you start getting into making music? Um, I started doing music when I was seventeen, eighteen. I was uh, in San Francisco. There used to be this like youth poetry company called you speaks um it still exists today i did a show with them but i was like freestyling and into spoken word and then i started just i started listening to like uh like neo soul d'angelo and bilal and the roots shit like that and so i was like finding a a way to like do my poetry over live instruments you know, so when I was 17, the kids uh, in a jazz band in my high school were like, yo, you should do one of your, like, one of your verses over this, you know, live guitar and bass and stuff that I really didn't listen to. Yeah. And so I just, that's where I, like, got my style. I was kind of mixed in with that. But, it, yeah, it started when I was 17. And what was what was people's, like, initial reaction when you first started? How was it? They was, they was, they was rocking with you or... People wasn't. <laughs> it was not. Right. <laughs> I mean, I was so sensitive about because you know, like, I I'm telling you, bro, I can't. Like, it was really a different time. Like, when I was in high school, you couldn't. People just weren't making music. Like, everyone wasn't just on Fruity Loops and and Pro Tools, like knocking out <laughs> songs and shit. It was rare. So, if I if I was to go play someone a song. Uh, that was like that would scare me to death. So I, I I held off for about a year. I played some shit for my mom. My mom like thinks I'm the greatest, and it was the only time she was like, I don't know, honey. Like, like you're gonna have to practice that. <laughs> um, but I I practiced a lot. But I think by the end of high school, I started to get okay, and we started winning like battle of the bands and competitions and talent shows and stuff. Yeah. How do you? How do you fight past that initial reaction, the initial shyness, the the maybe a little bit nervous to show people your music? How do you get past that? I mean, you just you work really hard at what you're doing so you feel comfortable. I don't think that's a bad feeling. Like I, I felt 
like I think highly of myself. I have, you know, pride in what I do. So I'm not just gonna be like, listen to this new shit, it's fire. Like I, I have to make sure I gotta know in my heart that it is and then yeah. then I'm not scared anymore. Yeah, no. I really like that. Um, so you made a statement based uh you said that people in LA value you off how much money you have. Do you do you still feel that way? I didn't really explain myself too well when I said that. Yeah. I just LA definitely is uh it's one of the only cities where like your your personal life, your social life and your work life, like your career, they're so intertwined. Yeah. <laughs> um sure. so you really you start to feel a little differently like every time you go out, you don't really just have fun just to have fun as much as you would normally. It's more like while I'm having fun, hopefully this leads to some other opportunity or, uh, or uh, you know, maybe I'm going to meet this producer, this artist. It's, yeah. it's like, maybe I'm going to get my pub up on Instagram. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I, know, I really know what you're talking about for sure. Yeah. Especially now so, being from out here. Yeah, yeah exactly. And some people don't just really – there's a humility that you get when you come from the Bay Area. Yeah. that you don't have here also like in the bay area people are so wealthy now from the tech that as like an artist it kind of like you just get humble like this guy might have a he might be a billionaire in this prius right here yeah <laughs> and, i mean that's like a that's like a cliche idea of the bay area versus la but it, it carries through it's it's yeah. real that's what i was saying if like i used to always remind myself of that like i'm a bay area i have a bay area mentality i'm not superficial i don't need like a to go lease a Maserati or like, like none of that is gonna um, fulfill me or whatever. But I don't. If you stop saying that to yourself, reminding yourself, you can get caught up in that. And yeah. No, nah, for sure. No, nah, I I agree with you for sure. We we are we both know how it is living in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I interviewed YMTK in 2019, and he talked about seeing you leave college. Um, and how he stayed. He talked about how the dynamic from seeing you go out, he, sometimes he felt like, damn, he should have left too. But I wanted to ask you, why did you choose to leave college? Like, you know, that's a big jump, I feel like. Bro, it was the best feeling of my life. Like, just <laughs> realizing that I had something in front of me that I was going to put my all into, a thousand percent, no hesitation, like that's that's a real that's a feeling of freedom. Like yeah. I don't care. Like even, I was doing cool and college was great. I had really good friends. I went to one of the best underrated colleges, UC Santa Cruz. Yeah. It's like beautiful, but there's hella people from the Bay. Yeah. And LA, you can go to the beach. Like I don't know, it was great. But I just the second I realized, like oh, I could just full time go for this. I was out. It wasn't even a question. I remember where I was, like, yeah. When when I realized I was gonna do that. But what's crazy is nowadays you don't have to do that anymore. You can just keep making songs in your dorm room, <laughs> posting them, waiting for something to pop off. Yeah. So so you would say that it wasn't a hard decision for you at all. In the beginning, it was it was hard, and like I, I talked to my old basketball coach, and he was like, you know. And I think this is true for everyone. You have to, the the really successful entrepreneurs and musicians, they didn't just jump into it like without getting their ducks in a row and thinking about it. And yeah. uh, like to be a risk taker, you have to kind of, you have to get serious about it. So it's not like I just moved down. Like yeah. I, I planned everything out. I knew who I was going to be with, what type of you know music I was going to make, who I was going to work with. I, I gave myself a blueprint. Um, but once I had like the blueprint and I knew what I was going to do, it was an easy choice. Yeah. No, I thought, I thought it was, I thought it was dope. Sometimes I, 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 grad, I graduated college. I went to Cal State Northridge, but sometimes I feel like if I would have started doing interviews, maybe, you know, and when I graduated high school or something, imagine all the, the more people I would have interviewed, the, the more time I would have put into it. Like, yeah. <laughs> You could be right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
tell me about your process for selecting beats and working on lyrics for your songs. Well, uh, I just like smoke a spliff and listen to beats and just try to get like I try when I wake up, if I'm going to be in the studio that day, I try to just listen to music, get into music and just come from a place of like loving music. Um, I get myself in a good mood, listen to my favorite songs, listen to new shit I like. And then when I get to the studio, whatever I've been listening to, whatever kind of feel I've had. I just bring that into the studio. I listened to that song, uh, the old this old Nelly song, "Loving Me." Yeah. Loving me. Uh, and I just I, I like listened to that all day the other day and got to the studio and that was like the inspiration. Sometimes we do it like that too. Yeah. Now that's hard. That's hard for sure. How hard is it for somebody to get you a beat right now? Your producer, you 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 open to taking beats for people, or you have a select producers that you're working with. How does it work? It's honestly, it is really hard to get me beats, but not because I don't like. I tell everyone, I've never been like, nah, I'm not accepting beats. I accept everything, but I primarily work with just two people, um, and like usually when I hear. If you want to have a cohesive sound, you can't just be working with anybody. You know, like you can't really. It's it helps you build an identity when you work with the, with a team. Yeah. And mine is just so established at this point with each other. It's hard for someone else to break through. Yeah. Uh. So that's the honest answer. But I listen to everything. Yeah. Now, now I always like to ask artists that because. Uh, I, I just feel like that's important to know because everybody's opinion on it is different. But I agree with you, though. I feel like if you want to have a cohesive sound, you definitely should get in tight with some producers and work together on that specific goal, you know? Um, 100%. Let's talk about your project out now, PMD, uh, the, the, the deluxe version. Um, what does PMD stand for? PMD stands for Postmodern Depression. Okay. It's like... Uh, it was this idea that I had for like a year, just about how we live in this age of anxiety and everyone's, that's kind of the main topic now, like even in hip hop music, depression, anxiety. For sure. Uh, and so I was just kind of like, it was my uh, album about that. Yeah. But I, why was it important for you to, to, to name the album that and uh, uh, to address an uh, important issue like that? I like to let my album titles just kind of, they're like something I've been saying or like a category usually. So yeah. it's just something I, I mean, it was a play on words. Like there's postpartum depression. And I, I was like, this is like postmodern depression. And yeah. it's postmodern, like Andy Warhol, the the postmodern genius. Yeah. He said he, he invented the term 15 minutes of fame. He was like, in the future, in the 60s, he said, in the future, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. And there's a song on my album called 15 Minutes, too. Yeah. And it's that's kind of like, I feel like we're in that future that he was talking about now, where it's like everyone wants to just be seen and it's an attention-driven society and they yeah. need their 15 minutes. And But that makes you depressed because you feel like you always have to, you know, you're, all of your validation is coming from the outside world. So, yeah. Postmodern depression. Nah, I like I like I like that for sure. What is new gold metal? New gold metal is uh, a record label that we started yeah. uh, in my team, <clears throat> and it's a uh, it's really like it was a a mechanism to release uh, PMD, yeah. my album. I had left uh, a major label, Universal Republic, and started my own shit. So. Yeah. Really, right now, it's it's the label that put out Postmodern Depression, and it's a it's an idea for the future yeah. that we're that we're building currently. No, I, I saw that you talked about this being a a project that you released independently. Why why did you choose to go away from the label per se? When you when you get in with a major label, it's like your first run is everything. Yeah. And if you don't replicate that first run the next time, 
you might get two more chances to replicate, to do the exact same thing. And if you don't, if you can't really pull it off, the energy just dries up. Yeah. And I had been through that before in my first band. My first band was signed to RCA yeah. in, in 2010 when I was 20. Yeah. Uh, and so at Universal Republic, I had this song, You and Me. We did the radio run. We yeah. got full support and it went double platinum and it's, yeah. it was a hit. It was the top 10. Yeah. Then, then we did it again with the next song and it was just like, not quite as popping. Yeah. We didn't get as much support because they don't give you as much support your second time yeah. and didn't quite work. Then we did it again and it was a little less. And then you could just feel it. Like they weren't, it wasn't as exciting. And then when you start to look at the numbers and you're like, how do I make money? Oh, I make money touring. I make money streaming. Like this, there's nothing of me on the radio right now. Um, so I just, I don't, I, li I literally walked into the office and just talked my way out of my deal. Yeah. And they, and they agree. They're like, yeah, it's better for us. So <laughs> there's no bitter, there's no bitterness really. You know? Like I can't wait till I have my next top 10, you know, yeah. just for the, for the vindication. Cause fuck yeah. them on yeah. principle. But at the same time, it was just business and I understood that. So yeah, I'm just trying to like use that as motivation for my new, for this project, for new gold metal. Yeah. Would, would you, would you expect people, would you tell people to do the independent route or what would you say? Fuck yeah. Yeah. I mean, unless you should just go into a major is just like, it's like when a, when a company goes public, and starts taking outside investors like you you have to be at a certain at a level already and then mm -hmm. you can use that label money to to take you somewhere else like yeah. they always say at republic like we can start the fire but we can put like, gasoline yeah. on the fire once it's burning so that's really what it is like yeah that's kind of what I've always seen the record. That's the kind of yeah, what I've always seen the record label is. They, they the record label doesn't necessarily have the spark, but they know how to to blow the spark up. <laughs> yeah, if they if they see something's working organically, then they're gonna be able to give you that to put that money in. You know, they'll put a million dollars into a project and make it work. Yeah. That's just sometimes that's what it really takes. Maybe yeah. not a million, maybe half a million. What what can the people expect from you as far as the new music coming soon? I know you released uh, the deluxe version, and I believe it was January. What what can we expect moving forward? I'm gonna put out an album this year. Okay, we have a title. Uh, uh I don't have a. I don't know. Not yet. Okay. It's called right now. It's called Folk Hero Funk. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> <I> like that. <laughs> it's like. It has the lyrical undertones of folk music. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Bob Dylan or something classic feeling, but it's funky. And I like to think of myself as like a, like being on tour in Kansas, like in a sorority house, playing an acoustic guitar, like some Americana folk hero shit. Yeah. So. <laughs> Nah, that's oh, awesome. I, I know I know we all can't wait to hear it, man, for sure. Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, in this new era, we don't really see people dropping like longer bodies of music. What why was it important for you to do the deluxe version? That's just some some business, some label shit. You put yeah. I like it's kinda just like a, a way to reintroduce your music you got to keep putting yourself out there especially on a product that you really believe in and worked hard on yeah so i had that tory the tory song came kind of after i was rapping the album so i yeah. wanted to get that out yeah. my favorite song on the whole project is on the deluxe it's called politics as usual yeah that's like another one that didn't exactly fit um but i really wanted it to be out in the world so the the deluxe is just a way to it's like when you release the B-sides, just a way to give the people another couple options. Yeah. Nah, nah. Definitely you had some uh, some stuff. You had the record with Mozzie too, which was fire for sure. Um, can, you, can you tell me, how do you feel 
race impacts the music industry. Do you feel that it, it's something that's in in the music industry? I mean, of course, bro. Like, it's the yeah. same. It affects it pretty much the same way that it affects society as a whole. Um, but the music industry is a place where a lot of non-white people thrive in it also. So it's also a beautiful thing. Like, the, you know, the heroes of the music industry are Black. Yeah. Uh, so... It's kind of like, I always, I tell people like, if you grow up in music and that's really like your heart is in music, a lot of times it kind of, your heroes are going to be black. Yeah. So like when I grew up, I didn't have any like white, I didn't look up to, it was like Tupac and Michael Jordan and Barry Bonds. Or, <laughs> it was like, I don't have any, I don't have any white people that I looked up to when I was little. I was like, I want to be like that guy. Yeah. So it's it's a it's like a di it's a different perspective. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, but man, like the racism at the top, it's just, it's the same shit. I, I would say it's more it's mostly just a a fight over control. You know, yeah. the white people think that they did everything and they put all the plays together and they built the recording studios. So we should have all the credit and we should own all the shit. And then. Black people from the South, like, we invented this whole thing, and you're just taking it, and we, it's ours. We should yeah. control it. So it's a fight over control at the top of the music industry. Yeah. Do you, do you, would you say, would you, do you believe it would be easier for an artist who's white to get notoriety than a black artist? Mm, not right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think if I was black, I'd probably be, probably get, be more popping. Yeah. In the beginning, it was like, oh, he's clean. It's a little white boy with soul. Yeah. But then it, in the past, like, 10 years, now it's like, if I was like, I mean, you know, I don't even got to say it, bro. But <laughs> the different people get looks. But that's that's about representation. And that's actually, that's a good thing, too. I would never, like, be yeah. pissed yeah. about that. Yeah. What would you say is the most challenging obstacle you've had in, had in your career? And how did you overcome it? Being white, <laughs> <laughs> you you bet you think people wouldn't. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just being white because I had to figure out how to like have rhythm and yeah. be able to. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, I don't know. Like, um, it's really hard, bro. Like, yeah. you'll be working. Yeah. I worked on a project for 18 months uh, with the same three people, and after a year and a half of like really working together every day, yeah, everyone in the room except me made that song loyal for Chris Brown. Wow. It was like I didn't Wow. I just tried I just tried so hard. And like towards the end of this one project, everyone in this room gets this like huge blessing from God. Yeah. And I get no part in it. Um why, so why shit like that. You just, we weren't on it or what? No, it was just like, it was like the acapella that was done. That was incredible already. Yeah. And then it got sent to my partner. He cooked the beat up real fast around it. Yeah. Sent it back to Chris Brown. Chris Brown's a &R was in the room at the time. And that's how shit happens. And it was like, damn, how did that whole, I'm in this circle and somehow yeah. all this, this blessing just like shot down like a bolt of lightning and completely and missed me. Yeah. So that that kind of shit happens, but that's that also made me realize like, oh, you have to go do your Marky Basie shit. Yeah. And then I went and I got Marky Basie alive, but it had a lot to do with that because you gotta basically being in the music business, you have to be able to read energy, yeah. and you have to be able to trust your gut, and that's that's the hardest part to listen to yourself because what other job like do you, you know do a, people's opinions and the vibration matter so much? Yeah. Most jobs, it's not like I hope people love this song. Like that's yeah. just a that's a crazy proposition. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. That is crazy. <laughs> what is a perfect day for you? Perfect day is I wake up early. I uh, I meditate. I read. 
listen to music. Then I work out. Then uh, get to the studio, drink a coffee, smoke a spliff. Yeah. Start working on music. <laughs> listen, listen to records. Yeah. Just try to get try to get in my zone. Uh, then around like five or six, I start drinking. Yeah. Uh, party a little bit, and be asleep by midnight. What are you drinking? Beer, hard liquor, wine, what? Depends on the day, uh, <laughs> but I'm I'm mostly uh, I like red wine. Okay. Most. I had I had this crazy last week. I had some great red wine. It was it was sweet and it was cool. And then the next a few days later, I got some free red wine, and it was the most bitter thing I ever tasted. And I was so <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> By the year, bro, it's a uh, it can go either way. Yeah, wine, wine's suggested? wine's alive in there, you know, so it can it can change. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions of some good wines that you like? Um. Uh, sure. I like uh Joel Gott. Yeah. I, I like like I don't like to spend like hell of money on wine, but Joel Gott. I like uh this Pinot Noir called Bella Gloss. That's yeah. probably my favorite. There's a uh, Windward Vineyard is my favorite favorite. That's like Pinot Noir exclusively yeah. Pinot Noir. Um. You know, just uh, just try to step it up from that two buck chuck, and everything will be all right. Are, are these sweet wines, or are these like a little bitter? Like, what are they tasting? I I don't particularly like sweetness the most. I like uh, just like a full body uh, a full bodied wine that um, I guess I, I wouldn't say bitter, but I like the tannic. Yeah. Okay. Kind of strong. Yeah. I guess you could call that bitter a little bit. I think I like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what advice can you give to independent artists? Don't overthink shit. Push it out. And the more you push it out and get your team behind you, like it really will build itself despite itself. You'll be overthinking everything and freaking out and your company, it will grow if you just keep feeding it. Yeah. So just, just try to keep moving through your projects. Make the shit make the video put it out get excited make the rollout campaign just get to the next one yeah. and you know just judge judge the frequency by how much money you're making off it bro if you're if you're sustaining and you're living cool and you're enjoying it then take a breath yeah. then come back and fight more but like keep it going and if it's not doing shit don't waste time like get yeah. to the next one if it's not moving yet yeah no i completely agree with you what is something that most people don't know about you um I mean, I feel like people that know me know about me at this point. Yeah. Uh, I was, I was like in a, in like a kind of like a R and B boy band kind of oh, when shit. I was uh, with instruments though. Yeah. Called Two AM Club. Yeah. Uh, back in the day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what instrument were you playing? I was just, I was the singer, but we had like. Bass, drums, guitar, keys. Okay. We were going crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think has changed the most in your music over the years? Like the sonics. I really just started paying attention to vibrations and frequencies and making sure that my music was hitting where I wanted to hit. Yeah. Also, my lyrical content got, I used to just. I used to come from, like, my lyrics used to just go way out for a little while. And I would just say, fuck it. I just said what I said. Like, I don't even know why I said it. And more intentional when I write songs to make to make each word uh, contribute to the story of the song. Yeah. I just got more mature, bro. It's just like anybody in any job. But it's been 10 years I've been writing songs. So I just, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm matured. I wouldn't even say I got better. I just matured. Yeah. Uh, it's so funny because um, I remember your uh, only the poets mixtape from 2014. So it's really crazy uh, to see your growth and how long you've really been in the game. You know, for real, I know. Yeah. Don't What's talk about that though. <laughs> What's the place you want to travel to? Um, Russia, Saint Petersburg. Why Russia? Just like I'm Russian, for one. Mm -hmm. I've never been there. 
but it just seems like it's the biggest country, right? Yeah. I think, or maybe Australia. But it, it's just like it's like going to fucking Mars. Just yeah. like your mind would be completely blown. Like yeah. I've been, I've been to Japan, I've been to Tokyo, I've been all over Western Europe. Um, so it would just be like, damn, you want to see how different Earth can get? Like that's where I would want to go. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm Haitian. I've never been to Haiti, and I, I really need to go there ASAP. We definitely need to see where we're from. <laughs> yeah, for real, especially that. I don't actually, I don't know how far Haiti is, but it's not like too it's far. Not, it's not too far. Russia is like yeah. far. Like, yeah, that's not. Nah, nah. <laughs> like, you need, you're going to need like a week or two to go there for sure. Yeah, exactly. What is the biggest lesson you've learned in the industry so far? Mm. Maybe uh, how important it is to practice things that keep you authentic. Like your authenticity isn't, it, it doesn't come just natural to you. You have to fight for it, which seems, you, it seems counterintuitive, but um, the industry is trying to turn you into a puppet at all times. It's trying to just figure out a caricature that makes money and then yeah. continue that. So you have to fight for your authenticity and, you know, you have to tap in yeah. big time, whatever that takes. So I, that's something I've learned and I've been bad at it often. So I've had to learn it over and over again. Yeah, no, I like that. And for my final question, I wanted to ask you, what advice can you give to uh, a, a new artist that's initially trying to get into making music? Make that music that all your group of friends loves the most. Be be your be your friend's favorite artist, and then you can make a career out of it. Wow, I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Do you have any final words for the people before you get out of here? Man, just stay safe out there. Keep being healthy. Yeah. Hell yeah. Marky Basie, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right, bye. You're locked in with the innovators. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell.